Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Uh, one of the coolest things about going to Fully Charged was being able to talk to all the young, talented engineers there. Um, and in this video, I have some clips of me talking to Daniel Morris. Daniel Morris is in charge of the uh, cooling system, which is something that we've always worried about and um, wondered how that thing would function. Well, we have some answers now, and I'm going to give you the uh, information right from Daniel's mouth. Now, he speaks very softly, so it's a little bit, um, the audio is a little off because I tend to be a little manic and speak very loudly, and Daniel speaks very calmly and uh, softly, so the volume difference is going to be pretty dramatic between the two, so I apologize for that. I don't know how to correct that. I should have just probably held the uh, mic closer to him, um, but uh, my arm was getting tired. Um, so anyways, uh, listen in on the conversation. I think um, he explains the HVAC system well, and uh, we have a much better idea of how this thing works after talking to him. You work on the cooling system, right? Yeah. Is that, that's your main thing, right? Yeah, on the cooling and the HVAC system. Okay, so can you explain to me how the cooling system works? If you're like DC fast charging the battery on a hot day over black asphalt. Yes. So, um, we have the full belly pan, which is going to be it's like something like 85% of the whole underbody okay. of the yeah, Terra. Uh -huh. is, it's going to be aluminum. Okay. So we have good heat transfer to the outside. Okay. Um, and then uh, when you're not moving, uh -huh. it is tricky. Yeah. Because uh, there's no airflow over it. Yeah. So the the, uh, the the panels themselves will actually cause airflow to happen. So because of convection. Yeah. Okay. Um, even then, that when you're really really hot, uh -huh. that's not quite enough. Yeah. So we do have kind of some backup things to pull air uh, across actually the inside. So okay. We use the inside. Um, okay. To pull air across and we. Um, so basically the aluminum pan at the bottom has little tubes that the coolant flows through, right? And then usually it cools through the outside of the of the pan. But on a hot day if you're DC fast charger, you're gonna pull air over the thing internally. Okay. And but what if it's just super hot air? Uh, the way that it works is, so if it's super hot, then we'll actually run the HVAC system uh -huh. to uh, to cool the battery, and then all we have to do is cool the HVAC system, but at that point, we have a big enough temperature delta, you can still cool. Oh, uh, okay. All right. And where's the where's the intake for the air? It's going to be at the cowl. Okay. So, um, it doesn't have to be big, it's not a whole lot of air that we are, uh -huh. uh, and then it comes out here at the back, so it'll flow in uh -huh. there at the front. Okay. And so aerodynamically, does air want to go into the cowl anyway because of the the way it is? Um, not really. Uh, the cowl, it's a vortice and also back here it's a bit of a vortice. So when you're driving, this whole system has no effect. Okay. Yeah. So it's really just when you're uh, not moving uh -huh. that you need to just move some air around a little bit. You can turn it Is the cooling system like pretty much figured out? Okay. So you yeah, pretty much... That's that's the design has been validated and locked down basically. Okay. Okay. So I circled back to Daniel to ask him some more questions after I learned about the inverter system, and one of the great things I noticed is how much more confidence um, Daniel has since the last time I've seen him, and he's really grown as an engineer and he's like a team leader now. So thumbs up to you, Daniel. Um, in this video, my camera work is terrible, and um, I'm like, the camera is somehow like pointing at people's feet and things, so it's not a very interesting video. So I'm gonna overlay some B-roll um, over the audio of Daniel talking about uh, the the cooling system some more. I try to, I try to, I try to grill him. Oh, sweet. And he was like, I can't, I don't, I don't think I can talk about that. Do I, do I need to fire him now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, so I was wondering, I, was, I just learned about that inverter thing. Yes, that, that, that inverter? Yes. So that thing generates coolant that's super hot, right? Okay. Like, is there, is there, is there like, is there like one cooling system for all of them, or are they like a different cooling system circuits? We have 
three cooling circuits. Okay. Um, one is for the powertrain, so that is uh, inverters and motors. Okay. So they're all all the inverters and all motors are, one are using one coolant circuit. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, that is the higher temperature of the three circuits. Uh -huh. um, what kind of temperatures do you have to deal with in that circuit? The maximum temperature that circuit sees before basically the vehicle shuts down is 85 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, way cooler that's, that's than pretty an hot. internal combustion engine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Still quite yeah. hot. Yeah. The battery circuit, so the battery has its own circuit, that's kept cooler, so it's below 60 degrees Celsius. Okay. Um, we do that through a combination of skin cooling, but also we can use the HVAC system to keep it cool. Okay. So the third circuit is the HVAC system. So uh, because we have skin cooling, we don't have a traditional condenser at the front of the vehicle. So uh -huh. we actually have a liquid cooling condenser. Uh -huh. So we actually reject that heat by pulling it out of the refrigerant, putting it into coolant, and then we can fill that. Okay. Now the condenser, the condenser unit on an AC unit in a regular car is behind the radiator. Right? Um, in a internal combustion engine, yeah. it's, it's in front. Okay, in, it's in front. Yeah, in oh. a in an EV, I think they're just separate. Uh, okay. But yeah, because because you need airflow across that, yes. right? Yeah. And so that one, so when we, you're running HVAC on, like, let's say you're running the AC on this thing, yeah. Um, you need it to. You need a fan to blow over that thing. No, so that's we use cool. We have a liquid cooled condenser. Okay, right. so you're using the belly pan cooling to 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 cool the HVAC system. Oh, okay. When you're when you're moving, sure. Every like constantly. If if you're not moving, the belly pan still works, right? Okay. So. But how does that? So will that work on a hot day over like super yeah. hot asphalt? So that's where the backup fans okay. kick in. So when you drop below like 10 miles per hour, the uh -huh. fans like to kick in. Okay. It's all very. It's all variable speed so if you're if it's hot but not just like right at the limit of what we can do yeah. fans they'll be on but they won't be drawing a whole lot of power making a bunch of noise they'll just be on okay well thanks to daniel for answering our questions thanks for you guys for watching comments below uh, maybe you picked up something i didn't pick up on so uh tell us what you think in the comments and thanks as always to our supporting members and have a great day everyone